Hey guys, Eric Kaplan here. I wanted to give you a free sample lesson from our seven day back to basics program. Now, if you have any issue with your hips firing in the downswing, if you early extend, come up and out of your posture, if you struggle to make a full shoulder turn, or if you have any bit of low back pain, this is the exact video lesson you've been looking for. Now, what we're going to be doing is diving into the three fundamentals developed by Alice and TG, my dear friend and mentor. We're going to be discussing a single optimal stance with you can apply to every club in the bag. We're going to be talking about the exact position of your spine to optimize your shoulder turn as well as decrease your low back pain, as well as how to center the weight over the ankles to engage bigger, more powerful muscles on the back side of your leg to improve the rotational mobility of your lower body in the downswing. Now, again, these concepts are going to absolutely blow your mind. And again, if you do like this video, click the like button below. And if you want to subscribe to our channel to be notified every single time we drop another premium video lesson just like this, um, click the subscribe button below. And if you do have any specific comments or questions about your swing, drop them below and I'll get to them in the next 24 hours. And again, if you want to dive deeper with us, if you want to get the advanced seven day program on accessgolf.com, we've included multiple other tour coaches. We included some major champions, some swing seat specialists. And if you want to get a customized program based on your exact issues, uh, go and click the link in the description below. And be taken to our AI technology swing analyzer. This is special software that you'll be asked a series of questions about your swing faults, your body type, and your skill level, and it'll customize the exact drills you need uh, to transform your swing from the comfort of your own home. Um, but again, I'm really excited to be putting together all these new coaches, all these new programs for you, because we really want to turn Access Golf into the preeminent um, platform for all of these um, incredible instructors to share the ideas with each other, as well as with you. Uh, can't wait to get your thoughts, and let's dive right in. Welcome to Axis Golf and welcome to day one of your back to basics at home structured full swing transformation experience. I'm your coach Eric Kaplan. I'm really excited to give you the blueprint by which you're going to be finally able to solve that one swing fault you might have had your entire life in less than seven days. Now diving right into our thesis here at Axis Golf is the fact that there's no such thing as swing faults, just missing fundamentals. So I want to introduce you to what I call the swing fundamental pyramid. Go ahead and cue that up. Um, this pyramid is basically that my brain works on a single sheet of paper. We have the bottom half of the pyramid made up of what's called the static elements or the things that are less variable. We have the elements on the top, which are the dynamic elements, which are the actually moving parts of your swing. And what's for me, what's so interesting is somebody will say to you, you have an issue with your rotation or an issue with your pressure shift without appreciating that the rotation and pressure shift are based on the elements below it, namely your stance width and the position of your spine. For as long as anyone has a stance width that's too wide or a position of the spine that looks like this, their ability to rotate well or create a weight shift or a pressure shift would be compromised. And so that's where for me, I like to say there's no such thing as swing faults, missing fundamentals. And if we're able to prescribe the right series of these fundamentals in the right way, uh, we can literally cure any issue in the golf swing overnight. And so that's what we're going to do over the course of this program. It's not just talk about fundamentals and redefine them, but refine our understanding of what they are, um, combine that with the understanding of what's the op proper order of operations to, to introduce them to your game. And so over the course of the basic back to basics program, we're going to show you exactly what we want to be doing and more importantly why in our advanced program, we're going to be giving you the, the exact drills you need to go ahead and rewire these patterns from the comfort of your own home, as well as the inner circle nuances that have served to separate my players on tour uh, from everybody else. And so diving right in, I do want to say just briefly that this program itself is really a unique culmination of not just my experience on tour working with about five or six different major champions, um, not just my experience working with golfers with Parkinson's after my father's diagnosed and the research I've done with these top doctors at Mayo Clinic, um, but also the experience of a woman named Allison TG, who is the founder of the Anatomical Absolutes. So it's been really fun to collaborate with her over the course of this program and be able to explain a lot more of the stuff that I saw growing up for my students with Parkinson's, um, namely the positions of the posture, the position of the shoulder blades help override a resting tremor and improve their balance, and how they work so well into the full swing, and we're gonna dive even deeper into that. But again, diving right in, I do wanna share the one rule of Axis Golf, is the fact that I want you to always ask me the question, why? If I can't tell you exactly why I should do something, you probably shouldn't do it. Now, this is the best first golf lesson I can give anybody. As a newly married man, worst thing you do with your wife ever, everything should be always yes dear at home, remember that. And so diving right in, we're gonna talk about stance width. And so a common thing that I have heard growing up um, is that you wanna play golf with your feet shoulder width apart. And of course the question is why? You know, your feet have nothing to do with your shoulders and in doing so, we're very much missing and bypassing 
the fundamentals of what we want to be doing over the course of our golf swing. Because one thing we can agree upon is if my stance width creeps too narrow when I play golf, if I try to shift my weight, I'm going to sway or my lower body will over rotate. If my feet get too wide, I can never get into a neutral position on my left side and allow my hip to properly clear. I'm never going to shift my weight. I'm going to lose a lot of power because of it. And I'm probably going to hang back on my bright side linked to heavy shots as well as blocks. And so what I saw growing up, <clears throat> as well as what I learned from one named Allison TG, is your stance width is in proportion to your hips, not the shoulders. So the quick aesthetic would be the outside of your hips <clears throat> is where you want the instep of both feet. We'll dive deeper into these exact proportions in the advanced course, but to kind of give you a baseline, that's what we're looking for. This is as wide your stance width can be to create a powerful pressure shift and no lateral motion of the head to be, to be spoken of. And so the neat thing about this is, of course, the understanding of where the idea came from to put your feet shoulder width apart is not based upon people trying to hurt anybody but rather aesthetics and what they saw. So a guy like Jack Nicholas was one of the best players ever, and his shoulders <clears throat> just happened to fit right outside of his hips. So to say to a guy like Jack Nicholas, put your feet shoulder width apart would be true for him, but certainly not for a guy like Tiger Woods, in that Tiger is built like a Greek god. His shoulders are massive and his waist is very narrow. So when to Tiger was told by Bush to put his feet shoulder width apart for a driver, you would certainly expect that he was too wide and was never able to get back to his lead side. From this position, of course, he's going to hang back inside of a neutral position, <clears throat> leading to wild blocks and hooks. So one of the reasons why Tiger himself has been one of the best middle iron players the game has ever seen is based on the fact that he had a variable stance width. He got too wide with driver. He found a more neutral position based on his pelvis with his middle irons, which is why he's so good with those clubs. But he's also historically had spin and distance control issues with his full swing wedges based on the fact that he was too narrow in his full swing there. So what we're advocating here at Axis Golf is that the fewer variables you have in your game, the more consistent you're going to be. And what, of course, what I saw were my students who have Parkinson's. If they got too wide or too narrow, they're going to fall off balance one way or the other. And so having this one constant stance width for them was paramount to creating consistency and balance, but also will allow you to keep the same ball position for every shot being hit off the deck. So <clears throat> the bottom of your swing arc is opposite your lead shoulder. This is where the club gets bottomed out. If you perpetually change your stance width, the ball position thus will also change. If the stance width stays constant for every club in your bag, the ball position, the bottom of the arc will stay the same. So again, just because the bottom of the arc is opposite the left shoulder doesn't mean that's where the golf ball should be. We're going to cover that more in the advanced drills program, but you can probably imagine you don't want the ball to be in the deepest part of your divot. Like in that what we're going to cover tomorrow is with the driver, we're going to share with you exactly how far forward the ball needs to be, and it is proportioned to the tee height. The higher the ball is off the tee, <clears throat> the more forward we want the ball to be, the more we're going to catch the ball on the way up. So this whole idea of stance width is extremely important to understand because for as long as we're too wide, we're not going to be able to shift our weight or shift our pressure, losing a lot of power over the course of the golf swing. Now, one of the things I like to say to somebody is, okay, rate your game for me. You know, rate your driving, rate your middle irons, you know, rate your wedges. And if somebody is saying to me initially that they're a really good wedge player and their tee shots are terrible, I'm going to the most common denominator. And the first question I'm asking themselves is, having them ask themselves is, is your stance with getting wider for driver? Because if it is, the tendency is going to be to hang back and have more issues. So again, keeping more things the same is going to be incredibly important. We're going to cover a little bit more of the exact nuances, exact proportions of that in the advanced program. But just know that it's proportion to the hips, not the shoulders. Again, we have golfers in many different builds out there. Some are massive in the shoulders, narrow in the hips, wide in the hips, narrow in the shoulders. If I told a woman, Typical women have more of an hourglass build where their shoulder hips are sometimes equal width, sometimes their hips are a little bit wider. So if a woman is told at this like knee jerk reaction, put your feet shoulder width apart, they're actually going to be too narrow. And they're going to have an issue where their lower body is going to over rotate in their backswing. The club's going to have a tendency of getting more inside, lift, get across the line, come over the top from there, all stemming from a misunderstood fundamental. And so that's not to say that somebody is wrong in seeing shoulder width apart, but they need to take a look at the proportions of the body that they're looking at first. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about, of course, is a common issue that would cause you to come up and out of your posture and limit the compression of your irons, which, of course, the fundamental would be weight distribution. Now, one of the more common things that I heard growing up also is that when you, want to, when you play golf, you want to have the weight on the balls of your feet. 
Of course, why? You know, this might be athletic for other sports. We want to jump and move around everywhere. But if you take a look objectively at the human body, you can stand up straight. You're going to plumb a line, ear, shoulder, hip, knee, ankle. This is where the body is designed to carry its weight. And so what I see with my students with Parkinson's, if they play golf with the weight on the balls of their feet, they're going to have a tendency of falling forward in their face. So for them to hinge the thighs back, to get the weight more over the ankles was an absolute paramount piece for them to go ahead and swing with better balance and without falling. This is also one of the things that you're gonna learn from Allison, which is, again, talking about the degree of hinge is based on the club we have in our hand, which is something we're gonna cover in our advanced program. But again, if you wanna feel something real quick, <clears throat> if you have an issue where you come up and out of your posture, early extend, stand up on your lead foot, go to the balls of your feet, try to rotate your lower body. It's gonna feel relatively difficult because your quads are engaged. From here, what I want you to do is center over the ankles and rotate. And so what we're gonna do a little bit more deeply is talk about how we wanna wait to get the weight over the ankle. It's not about leaning the upper body back, but rather showing you how to hinge. And again, the degree of primary tilt or the hinge is based on the club, and we're gonna talk about that in the advanced program, as well as the proper distance from the ball, the arm placement, et cetera. And so the third fundamental we're gonna talk about is neutral spine which for me is an incredibly important piece, especially for those of us who complain about losing distance from a lack of a shoulder turn, as well as the issues of low back pain. So when we stand up straight, we'll notice there actually are four natural curves of the spine. Now, the reason why we have these curves are the shock absorbers of the body. If I set up in this position here, I lose my lumbar curve. This becomes heightened for compression and pain. So we wanna be sure we're standing up a little bit straighter. And so from here, we're talking about the shoulders, positions tomorrow in, um, in that video lesson. But what I want you to do is feel how much easier it is to rotate from here than it is from here. You might even feel a little bit of low back discomfort if you try to rotate as opposed to if you're neutral. So again, I have a lot of students on the, on the PGA Tour champions, um, the senior tour, who basically complain to me. They say, Eric, I'm getting older. I'm losing my flexibility. I can't hit the ball as long as I was able to do when I was 45. I say, your issue is not flexibility, it's posture. You know, for as long as anyone's in this position, your body's literally in your own way. So again, the synergy of these three ideas, which is weight distribution over the ankles, stance width, and neutral spine, is what we call the primary tilt of the golf swing, which is found very simply in standing up in neutral, putting your hands on your thighs, hinging your thighs back until the toes come up, and then from here, adding flex to our knees. And again, this is a very simple piece, and again, we're gonna talk about the nuances of this in the advanced course, <clears throat> But just getting the weight more over the ankles help you stay in posture. The neutral position of the spine will facilitate a better shoulder turn, and you're also gonna be a lot more stable and prevent you from early extending coming up and out of your posture because you're engaging the hamstring and the glutes, which are very powerful muscles that are involved in the rotation of the lower body. So if you have an issue where the lower body doesn't clear quite as efficiently as you're looking for, it might be rooted in something at the very bottom layer of this pyramid. And quite frankly, if I'm, if I'm talking to a tour player um, or complete amateur, this is where I want to start with them. And this is actually the first lesson I gave to Bernhardt, both in putting as well as his full swing. And again, it's one of those things where his posture ended up getting worse and worse and worse as the clubs got shorter, many of us do. And his putting posture, when he was using the short putter, looked like this. And so by teaching him how to hinge, and again, the degree of hinge, we're gonna talk about the position of the arms in golf, we're gonna talk about that as well, as well as the conversation of single length clubs in the advanced drills video today. But just the baseline piece of learning that we wanna stand up in neutral, hinge the thighs back, add flex. And again, I'm not saying push your butt back. The reason why is when I'm pushing my butt back, I might be creating too much curvature in my lumbar spine, hyperlordosis, which is again, major issue in terms of causing pain. Thighs hinge back until the toes come up, add flex the knees from here. So even doing this a couple of times in front of a mirror, which again, I learned from Alice and TG is a really wonderful way in which we can make the brain learn these patterns even faster, um, is really important to do. So again, if you're doing this at home, um, use your iPhone as, uh, as a camera or just go ahead and go into the bathroom and do a couple of what we call primary tilts in front of the mirror. This is what we're gonna be talking about today um, in the advanced course is what are the things that should be the same over the course of your posture versus things that should be different? And of course, things like stance width, neutral spine, weight distribution over the ankle should be the same. But what we're gonna cover in depth in the um, advanced drills program is what changes between each club. What's the degree of tilt for a putter versus a driver? Where should the hand position be in those courses? And yet again, if you are a member of Axis Golf, uh, be sure to go ahead and register for the private Facebook page. That way you can go and access the live training 
which is an incredibly useful part of this learning process because you get to check out other students, their questions of other students uploading videos of their swing, their progress. Um, and again, I can't wait to be a cog in your wheel, but again, jumping back into the most important question you could ask me is why? And if I can't explain very clearly, very succinctly, why should you make the changes I'm recommending um, based on the issues that you see in your swing, don't do them. And again, that's where I'm going to be on this journey together. I'm here not to be only your coach, but your consultant and say, okay, what's the order of operations? We might want to talk about your weight shift before worry about your posture if that's not the biggest window of opportunity. So again, diving right into it. Just to recap, we're gonna dive um, a little bit deeper over the course of this seven day course into every layer of the Swing Fundamental Pyramid. Today we talk about the primary tilt. In the advanced course, we're going to talk about the nuances of this. Tomorrow we're gonna to go through the secondary tilt. Day three, talk about rotation, um, how to optimize start your swing, a powerful pressure shift, how to create more force um, by changing the, the equation, force equals mass into acceleration. We're gonna talk about elevation, how to create natural width in your swing, um, trail arm flexion and internal rotation, which is how you treat the body more like a slingshot um, by moving muscles into the end range. Um, then we're talking about the downswing power sequence. We got a really full course for the next seven days that will literally redefine the way that not only you think about the golf swing, but how you play. Can't wait to see you. All right, before I give you the link to access your free customized gift, don't forget if you like that video to smash the like button. And if you do want to subscribe to our channel, that way be notified every single time we drop another video lesson program just like this, uh, click the subscribe button below. And if you do have any comments or questions about your swing or what we covered today, uh, go and fill your questions in the comment section below and I'll get to them in the next 24 hours or less. And again, if you want to get a customized advanced program, uh, we got some really cool stuff for you because I put together the first artificially intelligent golf instructor. I mean, get this, we put together this software that uses machine learning. You'll be asked a series of questions about your skill level, your body type, as well as your swing faults. And our AI technology will sift through our over 250 video lesson programs that includes drills from me, major champion swing speed specialists, neuroplasticity drill specialists, and even some doctors that will customize the exact drills you need to be doing, an exact prescription, an exact series of drills based upon your swing faults to, to basically override your old swing patterns and build a new swing DNA from the comfort of your own home. I know it sounds absolutely wild because it is. It's the first time that this has ever been done in the golf instruction industry and coaches around the country are calling this, um, this technology, really it's disrupting the golf instruction industry. I know you're really going to enjoy it. So go ahead and click the link in the description below to give that a shot. Um, and again, if you really like this video, um, we're only gonna be doing bigger and better stuff from here. So again, look forward to your thoughts and diving deeper with you.